Hello all. Welcome to another video on the restoration of the Shanti Clear 2D 570. In my last video, I showed how I created the new tubes and reproduced the mica mold labels for the capacitors. So let's now take a look at the voice coil issue I created a few weeks back in my mitigation plan. Looking at the photos, you can see the big hole in the voice coil that I created. So here I am trying to uh, just remove the speaker cone from the voice coil and get down and just take a look at the damage. In doing so, just to get the voice coil out, uh, you can see it pretty much just fell apart, disintegrated right in my hands, just turned into a, uh, a big mess. Here are a few more photos, again, of me kind of picking out the voice coil remains from around the uh, center pole piece. Um, you can also see that the spider that actually holds the voice coil more centered around the pole piece is also compromised, and I'll have to reconstruct it as well if that's uh, what I decide to do going forward. Additional photos here that I'm sharing of the voice coil the spider, and again, you can see the center pole uh, device. Now, while I had this out, I did take uh, the opportunity to go ahead and capture measurements. So the center pole piece appears to be right at 0.75 inches or slightly under that. So I'm actually recording and documenting that information should I decide to uh, try to duplicate or reproduce the uh, voice coil. It's obvious that the voice coil, the spider, if I decide to move forward and try to salvage, you know, this speaker with the existing fill coil, that uh, I'm going to have to reproduce it. I can't salvage or use anything that I have here other than just the documentation I'm gathering from the number of windings or the length of wire, uh, diameter wire that was used to create the voice coil. So that's what I'm doing is collecting that information. I also spent uh, time kind of researching and reading about producing voice coils. And there's not just a lot of documentation out there. And I realize there's very, very little tolerance to kind of get things right. But I think that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to actually try to give this thing a shot and see if I can reproduce the voice coil and spider and recomb the speaker. So I decided just to go ahead and give it a shot and see if I could reproduce the voice coil. Uh, if I'm not successful, then I'll take other steps. But uh, here you can see a real simple spreadsheet that I put together in Excel. And again, the only thing that I'm doing here is just capturing some of the key data points and then just using some basic math to come up with um, basically the DC resistance per turn, etc. So let me walk you through it. Um, here again, I've put my center pole diameter in at 0.75 inches, which is depicted here by the, uh, the speaker below. In addition, you'll see that I captured the DC resistance here of the voice coil before I created my damage, and it was right at 5 ohms. So next, you can see that I focused on the voice coil circumference. And to get that number is simple. You take the diameter, which again is your longest length through the circle, and multiply that by pi. So in this case, 0.75 inches times pi, or 3.142. And again, that gives you close to 2.40 inches per turn. So you may ask, how do we go about recreating this voice coil? So here's what you do. Again, I took my uh, magnet wire, I checked the diameter, and it's somewhere between a 35 or 36 gauge wire. In my design here, I plugged in 36 gauge, which again has a diameter of 0 .0050 inches. And you can also see here what the DC resistance is in ohms per foot. I converted that from a thousand feet, and there's others that maybe publish the data on a per meter basis. But knowing that, as well as knowing that my original design DC resistance of the voice coil was right at 5 ohms. I can take this information now and calculate out the number of windings 
or the distance or length of wire that I would need to reproduce the voice coil. Continuing on, you can see here now, I can see my DC loop resistance per turn using the information I have at 0 0.0825. At the same time now, I can calculate out the number of estimated turns I need to achieve 4.9 ohms or 5 ohms, right at 59 to 60. At the same time, my total wire length will be just under 12 feet or 142 inches. So next, again, I'm going to take all the information that was available to me from the original design. I plugged it into the simple spreadsheet that I created. Again, that gives me some other key metrics that I need to know to actually try to reproduce the voice coil. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll focus on the uh, voice coil itself, uh, try to figure out what material works best, nail down the diameter to make sure it is 0.75 inches. Is it slightly above that or below that? In addition, I have part of the spider left. I'll scan that on my scanner to scale and go ahead and try to reproduce that piece and do some mock-ups of the spider along with the voice coil and have that design complete and again I've ordered my magnet wire so maybe within a week or so I'll try to do the winding which I'm going to do manual I know that's going to be tedious and time consuming but I'm going to try to give that a shot again if all this fails no big deal I'll just take a different approach we'll pull this particular speaker out and try another arrangement but I wanted to give this a shot Again, the Chanticleer 2D 570 seems to be a rather unique radio, and I'd like to leave it original if possible. Thanks again for all my new subscribers, and I appreciate you taking time to watch.